Some people just send the main left right to the live broadcast and call it a day, but you can do better than that. So in this video, I'm going to show you four different approaches to do the live stream mix. The first two are probably something you've heard before or what you think of when you think about live streaming. The third one is the most efficient in my opinion. It requires the least resources and doesn't require any extra people to do it. The same person can mix front of house and the live stream fairly easily. The fourth method is a lot more involved. It requires more resources and more people. So you need one extra person to just mix the live stream. First approach is to use the matrix. So I'm going to go to the matrix page and select matrix one and go to the config tab and stereo link it to matrix number two. And that will be the audio that goes to the live stream. You can EQ it, compress it. You can put an insert on it. In my opinion, that insert should be a limiter, the precision limiter, because live stream audio always requires to be more compressed and more contained and louder than your normal live audio in the room. And also you would want to send that matrix either to a physical output or to a card output to send it to your stream. Go to the routing and go to to the outputs page and you can set for example output 13 and 14 to be matrix 1 and 2 and so you can physically plug XLR cables into your console or stage box whatever and send it to the video switcher or if you're sending it via the card then you're gonna go to the card outputs page and you're gonna assign outputs to out 9 to 16 for example so whatever you did here will be also here so since matrix 1 2 is on output 13 and 14 of the out page it is within that out 9 to 16 but if you're also recording and you don't want to waste the other six card outputs just for these two you can set it to user out and configure it in the user out page I've already made an entire video about output routing an entire video about user routing so i'm not gonna repeat that again in this video okay now you have a matrix and you're sending it out somewhere but you still have to get audio into it and since the matrix is a bus for buses you cannot send channels to a matrix you can only send buses to a matrix so the simplest way i can think about this approach is to make subgroups if you have a lot of buses available to use that you're not using for monitors or something else you have plenty of buses you can do stereo subgroups so i'm gonna click here and link it to the next one three link it to four and five link it to six and i'm feeling generous so let's just do one more seven and eight now this takes a lot of buses maybe you would only do that if you have a dedicated monitor console or maybe you have the p16 personal monitor so the musicians can do their own monitor mix on their own machine and all of these buses are gonna be subgroups unfortunately it's very inconvenient to do subgroups on the edit app because here's how you do it you select any channel and you go to the sense tab and you make sure that the global icon is turned on to affect all the channels and you're gonna click subgroup here here above the number of the bus that you want to turn into a subgroup. So I'm turning these into subgroups. But here's the problem I mentioned. If you go into the sends on faders for the buses, you will notice that all the channels are assigned to the subgroup, which is very inconvenient. On the console itself, you don't have that problem. You can just go to the configuration page of the bus itself and change the sends to subgroup, and you will only assign the channels that you want to go to that subgroup. So in this case, you would have to turn off every single channel and only keep Keep on the ones that you actually want on the subgroup that's why i really like the mixing station app because it's so much quicker to do this you go to the mix layer click on the bus itself and go to the assignment page you can press and hold on one channel and swipe like this to remove everything in one go press and hold swipe press and hold swipe that's so much quicker than doing it on the edit app and then you can just click on the channels that you want to be on that subgroup now the reason i made four stereo subgroups is that the first one is gonna be for the music so all the musical instruments the second subgroup is gonna be for all the vocal microphones the third subgroup for all the speaking microphones and the fourth subgroup is gonna be for your crowd mics which you should be doing because it sounds very dry and awkward if there's no sound of the crowd in the live stream you can do just a mono subgroup for the speaking microphones it doesn't need to be stereo because it's just speaking and you're just gonna mix normally and because they are subgroups the level of the fader of the channel itself will affect the level of the signal that is going to the subgroup and the only thing left to do is to send these subgroups to the matrix that we set up in the beginning click on the subgroup and go to the sense tab you're gonna have the tap on post fader and send that subgroup to the matrix at zero db do the same for the other subgroups since it's post fader you will be mixing 
passing into the matrix just with the faders of the buses themselves. So you're not using the sends. Now, if you're using these groups for your front of house mix, in that case, you would want to have them as pre-fader and you would mix with the sends, which is very inconvenient in my opinion. And in many cases, you don't have that many free buses if you're using only one console. So let's see the second approach with bus sends. Bus number 11, stereo link it to bus number 12, and that will be my live stream mix. Should that bus be a pre-fader bus or a post-fader bus? If you're only one person and need to have most of your attention on the actual front of house mix, then I would say do a post-fader bus. So I'm gonna go select any channel, go to the sense page, and for bus 11 and 12, this live stream bus, I'll make it a post-fader bus. Go to the sends on faders for that live stream bus, and all the channels at zero. The reason for that is that you can just just mix your normal front of house mix and the faders of the channels will affect how much is going to the live stream bus. So it's as if both mixes are the same, but maybe the guitar is too low in the live stream. Maybe the vocals are too loud in the live stream. Then you can go into the sends, raise it up or turn it down. The actual faders of the channels are still affecting the live stream, but you have this extra layer of control. However, if you have another person available to only do the live stream mix, you can make the live stream bus pre-fader and then that person will be mixing on the sends on faders. Your front of house mix would not affect the levels that are going to the live stream. Now, if you are doing this on the console itself, front of house mix engineer will be using the faders. And if you're using this app, it kind of sucks, to be honest, to do sends this way. What I would recommend, which is the best option for both efficiency and resources at the same time, is using the mixing station app because you have something called IDCAs. And I already made videos about how to use IDCAs and why to use IDCAs. But here's what you can do in the case of a live stream. Bus 11, 12, which is for the live stream that we are sending stuff to. It's pre-fader. The levels of the sends are not affected by the levels of the faders for the front of house mix. One person can do this very easily because of IDCAs. I'm going to go to the gear icon on the top right here and go to layers and click on the plus icon right here on the top right and I'm going to create a layer. I'll put in that layer IDCAs. So I'll make four IDCAs. The first IDCA will be for all my musical instruments. Let's call it music. And before assigning any channels to it, you will have to decide where it's going. I don't want it to go to any mix. I want it only to be for the live stream mix, bus 11 and 12. Changing the destination or the target mix will deselect all the channels. Okay, fine. We haven't selected anything yet. Okay, yes. It says that the target mix is live live left. These channels will go to live left and live right because these buses are linked. So now that we decided what is the target mix, we decided that we're only working for that live stream bus. I'm going to go ahead and select the channels that have the musical instruments. So let's say channels 1 to 16 are all music and that's it. Go back. I'll create another IDCA for the vocal microphones and I will make another IDCA for the crowd microphone. One last IDCA that will be my talking microphones. This layer has my IDCA. And the reason this is already up is because I'm sending stuff already to the mix bus. So I'm going to click right here and go to live and hit sends on faders. And as you can see, I have things sent to it. I will put the IDCA on this layer so you can actually see what's going on. This is the IDCA. If I lift it up or down, it will change the send levels of all these channels to that live stream bus. This is not affecting the level of the channels to the main left right. This doesn't matter. It's only changing the level that is going to the bus of the live stream, which is really cool. Now, I only put this next to these just so you can see it visually. But for the sake of organization, you just have them on a different layer. If I do this, I'm sending the vocal microphones to the live stream bus and you can see it like so. If I change this one down, go to the vocal microphones, you can see the sends are down. If I move it up, you can see the sends are up. Right here, it's written on instead of mute because I forgot to assign the target mix for these IDCAs. So I'm going to click on the crowd and make sure that it's going to the correct bus. And I'll have to reassign these because each time you change the target mix, it will deselect the channel. So just when you're setting up IDCAs, make sure to do it correctly the first time. And now if I raise the talking IDCA, it will send the last three channels, which are my talking microphones you can see right here to that live stream bus i turn it down look at it they got turned down so if you are busy with your main mix you can set up idcas and just mix with these 
for faders for the live stream mix very quickly without wasting extra buses you're still just using one stereo bus or two mono buses or even if you want to have your live stream in mono you can use one mono bus and do the same and if you still want to change individual channels you can still do that you can still go to the sends on faders and move one channel at a time but this is a really quick way to move things globally and the IDCA will always have the color of the bus that it is going to if I change the color of the live stream bus let's say I will press and hold on it to open this scribble strip I'll change the color to green and so if I go back to the IDCAs you can see the background is green so you always know this IDCA is mixing to which bus you have seen how you can use buses and subgroups and IDCAs based on if you have a lot of buses to use or you don't have a lot of buses to use. But if you have a lot of channels to use, there's a different method that you can do that allows you to make a completely different mix that is completely independent from your front of house mix with different EQ and compression for each channel and different effects. Click on the video on the screen right now and I will teach you step by step how to do this independent mix. So click on the video on the screen right now and I'll see you there.